So this leads us to the next part, which is matrix vectorization. So uh, with matrix vectorization, um, this is when we really talk about something called embeddings. And I think they're like one of the coolest like thing that you could kind of do um, because it's very, um, it gives you kind of interesting results that um, in the same way that PCA would give you results that you might not have come up with yourself. So the idea of embeddings is that they're using something called latent properties to predict, you know, how well, let's say, let's say, I'm going to keep using movies and ratings. And so like saying, okay, like, what is uh, the rating going to be for this particular movie? And it uses some latent properties that going to best predict the system. These latent properties are things that were not explicitly stated when the data were collected. So you can think of like, you know, someone rated Toy Story, you know, 3.5 out of five stars. They didn't say why they like three, why they had a 3.5. They just said it was 3.5. And the idea here is that you can build up these embeddings um, to describe, you know, this movie. And basically it's kind of like in the same way, like with PCA is um, when we talked about using PCA to say, okay, like let's say for a home, right? Where we have, um, let's say like the square footage of the house, number of bedrooms, and those late, those features combined to some latent feature called size of the house or like, you know, the neighbor, how good the neighborhood is. And those weren't directly described by the features, but they're kind of combined. And that's kind of similar to what embeddings is doing. But the thing is that we're going to embed that information onto um, describing the user, in this case, in the, mo in the movies. And so the idea here is we go back to like, oops, move this window too much. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Um, if we start with like a movie, so let's say like the movie Minions, right? And so the idea here is that this movie Minions, right, has like, you know, this vector, right? So you can imagine like it's going to have some numbers, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, negative 0.8. This could be multidimensional. This could be, you know, eight dimension, 10 dimension, 20 dimension, right? But the idea is basically it's usually relatively compact compared to having all of the movies put together in once. And you can kind of think of these latent features as being things like, how funny is it? How romantic is it? How much action is there? You know, those kind of like properties that aren't directly like created, but like it's describing something about this movie. And then we have a user vector, and this shouldn't be user minions, unless it is a minion. So it's like user, let's say Victor. Okay. So like you can imagine there's a user vector here, and this user vector has the same, um, what's it called? The same dimensions. It's describing those same things, and these numbers are representing maybe more like saying, you know, how much this user, you know, this user Victor, how much they like comedy, how much they like romance, how much they like action in their movies. And the idea here is that then you could take these two movies together, combine them together, right? Basically taking the thought product and saying, you know, okay, like, well, this movie has a lot of action. Hey, Victor likes a lot of action. Okay, this one has, you know, not that much romance. Oh, Victor really likes romance, you know, like, like this is not a good choice. Like, oh, this one has a lot of scary stuff. Oh, Victor really hates scary stuff, you know, like, so this is gonna be a bad movie for them. So the idea there is that you can combine these features and this will give you an overall number. And it's, that overall number will literally be the target of that, um, whatever you was measured. So for example, if you were measuring ratings, this um, combined number would really, literally give you that you predicted rating and stuff like that. If it was something where it's like, whether like or dislike, it's gonna give you the probability of like between, let's say zero is dislike, one is like, um, or you should say like minus one is um, dislike, one is like, it's gonna give you a spectrum on there and say, are you closer to being liking it, not liking it, or even probably neutral, okay? Cool, so does that make sense to people? Okay, now the big part is gonna be, oh, go ahead, Lauren. Sorry, so, um, so for instance, like, it, like you would be 21% like a or like whatever 0.21 would be of like the total with like a comedy yeah that that would be something you're saying like this individual component like yeah 0.3 point times 0.7. yeah it's kind of like representing you know something like oh how much they like comedies um it's important to note though that like with embeddings you usually can't directly tie it to saying what this embedding actually means. This is just kind of like the intuition of like how this works. So in reality, this 0.7 might mean some combination of like comedy, movie, whether it had puppies in it, you know, like it could be some weird thing that we don't really understand and know, but it does a good job in predicting um, the rating. Okay. 
cool. And this is where it comes down to, okay, like how do we build this embedding? How do we get to this point? And that's where some, there's some ways we can do this. So one way is something called matrix factorization. So this is kind of going through a little bit of like the idea of what's going on. So if you imagine we have this matrix right here and note that we call it sparse, meaning that there's some spots that are off, not in there. It's like missing ratings, for example, if Thomas Bayes didn't see Toy Story, you know, like you wouldn't have a rating for that and stuff like this, or, you know, Florence Nightingale and like Alan Turing and stuff like this, Ada Lovelace and stuff like that. Like they don't have these ratings, that's why they're empty. Um, but the idea here is that we can take some user embedded matrix and each of these rows is representing the user. So let's say like, for example, like Thomas Bayes. Um, so we have Thomas Bayes here. And these are some latent features. So you say how much they like comedies or how much they like, you know, action and whatnot, right? And this is going to basically describe those factors. So this is kind of like this user's profile, okay? And then we're gonna multiply this, right? And by multiply, I mean dot product, right? We dot product this with the movies embedding. So like for this, let's say for this matrix right here, um, this matrix is going to be uh, this column, but this row here, is going to be all the latent features, like how much action does it have? How much, you know, comedy does it have? How much romance does it have? And so on. And so the idea here is that we can combine this together and these together will give us the rating or the predicted rating for um, Thomas Bayes watching the matrix. Does that make sense? And note that we have it just basically because it's a matrix here, we're gonna have multiple vectors. So like each of these rows are gonna represent a user, each of these columns are gonna represent a movie and then in this case, the columns here and the rows here are representing the latent features. Okay. So our goal basically is to say, how can we build, what factors do we use, what numbers do we use to basically have the numbers in here times the numbers in here to get us the, about what this looks like. And this is how we kind of produce the beddings or embeddings. Okay. So our ultimate goal is basically find embeddings, which are basically these factors these latent features that are going to do a good job in giving the original like ratings based on users and items and items being movies in this case. Okay, follow me so far? Makes sense? Okay, so if you follow me on that, then there's one strategy we can do called uh, SVD or singular value decomposition, okay? So this is what's talked about in the curriculum and I'm not gonna go far into the math and stuff like this, like, like how do you kind of pull this out and stuff like this and the algorithm that go through it. But the idea here is like, okay, A is, the ratings, okay, the user and ratings, okay? So you can think of like number of users and then like the different ratings on D, okay? And what's gonna happen, what we wanna have is basically this uh, matrix, which is gonna represent, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit so you can see both of them. This matrix here is going to be this user embeddings matrix. And this V uh, transpose T, basically just turning on its side, is this moving embeddings. So you can see the R is gonna represent these embeddings. And there's some little matrix here, essentially. This is what kind of like the value decomposition says. There's some matrix here that we can combine all these together to create this. And so the idea here is that we can eventually just take this guy out and use just U and V to combine it together. And so we're really what we're trying to do here. And this is where I added a little bit of extra notation. So if you guys seen this in the curriculum, note that this words on the bottom won't be there in the picture. I just kind of add this here is that this matrix is really representing how much users feel about latent features. So you can think of like, you know, how they, how they react, like how much they like comedy and action and all that stuff. And then the sigma um, matrix right here, note that it's square, but um, it's saying how much these latent features matter in predicting these recommendations. So you can kind of imagine saying, you know, you know, does it have puppies? Is it action? Is it romance? Is it, you know, made in the 1990s, maybe some of those latent features matter more in um, predicting those things. So you can imagine this, this actually end up being like a diagonal matrix and those values on that diagonal are gonna represent saying the higher that number is, the more that latent feature is going to matter in predicting the user in a movie uh, recommendation or ratings. Does that make sense? It's kind of like a weight kind of thing. And the very last matrix here, is saying how latent features um, appear in recommendations. So like, this is kind of like saying, you know, all right, here's latent features. Is this movie a comedy? Is it, how much of this movie is a comedy? You know, it's like, oh, it's kind of like a comedy, but not really focused as a comedy versus something like, oh, like how much of an action? How much of an action movie is it? Oh, it's got a lot of action in it. Or, you know, how much romance does it have? And so on. So the idea here is that 
this matrix is encompassing, um, what's it called? Um, all those latent features and how those movies have those latent features in them, okay? And so the main thing that's gonna end up happening is that note that this is equal, right? So you can derive this sigma here. Um, what you're gonna end up having to do, partly because it's a, a sparse matrix, is basically saying what latent features actually matter. So, you know, you can make this matrix very, very large. Like, it looks like a little small thing, but this could actually be very, very large. Um, it's saying, what are the kind of like the minimum number of factors that you need to basically predict it? And this will end up being that way. We can get about this equal to each other. Okay, cool. So this is kind of like how this, the concept goes through. Does this make sense overall, I think? Like, at least this idea of like combining these matrix together. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through the like algorithm how to find this, like, you know, this part. Um, it goes through the curriculum on this part. But I think understanding how these kind of come up together make it a little bit easier to understand like what the algorithm is trying to find. Okay. So when you multiply those mm -hmm. smaller matrices all together, what you're gonna get is a matrix that where hopefully where you had a value before, you've ended up back at that value. Like if Bay is rated Toy Story 5, you've ended mm -hmm. up close to five again. And, but then the cells that were empty get filled. That's the point, right? That you, you end up with the information you had before plus this new information filled in. Yeah, so the actual, the thing is, this is actually, will be exact. So note that this is equal. Like there, this matrix exists in some form to get this. So you can imagine filling zeros in here or something like that, right? Um, and the big thing about this is that note that when I go back to like the embedded matrix, this is about equal. It's never gonna be exact. And it's because we're not keeping in the fact of this extra thing of like how much these latent features matter. Essentially, we're going to remove some of these latent features just so we can basically get it working. So one of the ideas here, if you imagine to do this, one thing you could do is say, hey, let's just say for Bayes, say, let's say we have like, you know, 500 movies and we have Bayes, let's say, let's pretend make it easy. Like there's, they have rated every single movie. Um, is we just have a matrix, or sorry, a matrix, a vector that says Bayes like, Bay likes, Bayes rated the matrix 5.0, Toy Story 3.2, you know, Fight Club 2.5, and you just have this huge matrix of 500 long. The problem with that is that's a huge high dimensional matrix. And we talked about with high dimensionality is that essentially it's gonna be a lot harder to basically work with that um, vector now. So what the embeddings does is like, okay, like what, can we compress this information of like, you know, how this vector was created? Can we compress this information to a lower dimensional form? And lower dimensional could literally just be like eight numbers versus like 500 numbers and stuff like that. So the real goal here is trying to find this embedding that works good enough, right? And this is kind of like saying, okay, here's like the exact thing. And we're gonna try, basically try to say, well, okay, can we estimate this? Can we modify this so we can get that something's good enough, but not the exact thing? Okay. So this is one strategy to do. This is not the only strategy, but it's one possible strategy you can use as um, SVD. Um, there is another strategy, but we don't have all the like information on how to do this. And one basically is building a neural network. Um, and essentially what you do, I will talk about this again in mod six, but I'm um, going to do natural language processing with word, word embeddings. But uh, one possible thing you can do is have the embedding or this embedding layer in the neural network and say, all right, here's what you have. Here's all the like, you know, users ratings. And here at the very end is the actual ratings. Make a prediction from like user to like recommendations um, and design, like, basically train that and figure it out. And the model will basically figure this out. But what's really cool is that if you take this middle part here, that actually ends up becoming your um, embeddings vector, essentially. And that means that you can essentially just use that middle part. That's another strategy to build up this embeddings. Okay, so yeah. So basically, the main goal here is that we're just trying to find embedding that does a good enough job. Okay. 